Ladies and gentlemen, it's Hot Legs, straight from the Wine Exchange, with wine expert Kyle Meyer. Okay, so the world's sommeliers have spoken. They're, they're tired of cloying, pandering, over-the-top, deeply fruited, heavily oaked wines. They, they want something lighter, they want something fresher, they want something more food versatile. You know, they say the same thing year after year. You know, it's like um, talking dry and drinking sweet. You know what I mean? It's, it's the same type of deal. But today, we have a couple wines that, um, that are sommelier's best friend. And you know what, they're, they're the best friend is someone that doesn't like, you know, uh, uh, a richer, more substantial bottle of wine. Don't get me wrong, these are rich and substantial. When I mean rich and substantial, I mean that, oh man, am I tired of drinking this. Oh God, I need a nap. You know, these are not nap wines. These are go out dancing wines. And uh, they're from Austria. Yeah, Österreich. So we're dealing with Austrian reds today. And these are two of the more impressive Austrian reds uh, that uh, I've tasted in the last year. And they're from one of the best lady winemakers in Europe. Birgit Braunstein is, uh, produces these wines from her tiny little vineyard in the Burgenland, which is eastern Austria, a bit south of Vienna, next to um, Lake Neuzietlitzsee. There will be a test at the end of this hot legs. We're going to kick straight in with the wines because the story speaks for itself. You know, there is a little bit of an Austrian red wine culture. It was always more, the red wines were always more popular. Uh, in Austria than they were here. But now these wines are starting to make some inroads because the quality's gone through the roof. Um, uh, the EC has seen to it that the, uh, that the producers of red wine in Austria get all the money they need, all the funding they need to produce world-class wines to uh, generally pimp Austrian red wine to the masses. And we like that because they're really good. We're going to start with uh, Birgit's Saint Laurent. Now, Saint Laurent is um, a native Austrian red wine variety, and descriptor-wise, it's kind of like, um, oh man, like, like, like Pinot Noir that, that kind of like went out partying all night and didn't quite, you know, got up the next morning kind of like, whoa, and hasn't showered or anything, but, but still looks good. You know what I mean? Like still got last night's party in them. And that's kind of Saint Laurent, a little more wild, a little more sauvage version of Pinot Noir. And the wine has that in the nose, you know, there's like, um, uh, sweat's wrong, because sweat will be like, eh, it's sweaty. No, no, it's not sweaty. But what it is, it's, it's um, more sauvage, more cerebral, more wild, more untamed uh, in the aromatics. And you get this wonderful cherry underpinning and, um, yeah, it's funky. It's funky. And, and, I, and I like funky, because it makes you talk about the wine. And people will talk about Saint Laurent. Mm. Very pinoy on the palate, but maybe a touch more intense in the middle with a little more of a, a tobacco-y, peppery slant to that cherry fruit. And there's some sweet herb going on and a touch of mineral underneath. What a really complex single vineyard wine. And uh, this wine sees a bit of time in new oak. And you know what? It sucks it right up. There's not an ounce of oak on this wine. And I really, you know, besides the usual uh, schnitzel and that sort of thing that you'd get in Austria, I find this wine to be really handy with those tweener dishes, okay? When you're not going just the fish thing, you're not going the hardcore meat, um, uh, fowl, uh, veal, uh, pork, the other white meat. Um, this wine goes perfect with, those, with, with that sweet spot. Um, when I was in Austria last, we had some great Saint Laurent with a really rude dish. It was a pickled raw rabbit. And this wine went perfect with it. Although we pretty much had to bet each other at the table who's going to eat the pickled raw rabbit first. But when we did, this wine was aces with it. So next time you're doing pickled raw rabbit, grab a bottle of Saint Laurent. But seriously, really killer wine. She's got a nice touch. The tannins are really fine. That's sometimes the problem with Saint Laurent. For all you Saint Laurent geeks out there, uh, you'll know the problem with Saint Laurent is sometimes it can be a bit furry. So kind of like Pinot Noir, but kind of like kind of chewy, kind of furry, kind of like. Mm, this one doesn't have any of that. Very velvety, for want of a better word, on the palate. Very smooth, refined. Great job with this wine. I love it. Won't win any tasting competitions because it's not over the top, but what it is is delicious. Now we're moving on to her single vineyard, Zweigelt. Zweigelt, Z-W-E-I-G-E-L-T, Zweigelt. 
This is the bastard child of Saint Laurent and Blau Frankisch. They combined two really weird esoteric grapes that no one's ever heard of and made another weird esoteric grape that no one's ever heard of outside of the uh, Burgenland. So, but this is fun stuff too. This is a single vineyard wine from the Mitter Yolk Vineyard, 2006. Very reasonably priced, um, south of $20 on the shelf. And what you get with Zweigelt is maybe some of you have had uh, a good Italian dolcetto before. This wine comes across almost kind of dolcetto-y, where you get a nice healthy color. Um, you get lots of bright berry fruit, good zippy acids. The wine's not very tannic at all. Um, very easy drinking and, 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 and palate quenching. You know, you can have it with salami, good salty stuff. You know, that plate, that, the starter plate, the salumi with the, with the well, in, uh, in Austria, they're going to use like blood, they're going to blood sausage, they're going to do um, versts, they're going to do, you know, all that kind of stuff. This wine works dynamite with that type of cuisine. Mmm. Same type of deal. This is why we love Birgit's wines. The problem with these wines is sometimes they're not that polished. The acids are high. It's a cooler vinification area. Um, they can be pokey, kind of lean and tannic. These wines have, are very round for the genre and have great symmetry front to back on the palate. They're really charming wines from a really charming lady. So if you get a chance to climb the Saint Laurent or Zweigelt Mountain, please do so. And uh, don't be afraid to start with uh, Birgi Braunstein's wines because they are some of the finest produced in Austria. Jawohl!